jiggy them. On your wind, you saw jiggy them. Jiggy them, jiggy them. On your wind, you saw jiggy them. I saw the Kanaba. Mary D. And then when you are your man, study of the year and a lot of things are just uh, just happening and we thank God that we made it uh, last year and we are here another year to continue to move the church of God the baptism of Christ forward we are so glad that you are welcome we thank God for everybody online you are all welcome online Joining us on today's Bible study, we're so grateful that you are all here. Thank you, everyone. If I don't call out your name, that means I didn't see you. But if you are commenting, I'm seeing you. So please continue to like, comment, and uh, turn on your notifications so that every time we come online or send, uh, send a video, you'll be notified. So um, so glad to see all of us again one more time in this brand new year. 
which God told me to tell everyone all over the world that this year is an unstoppable praise year. Unstoppable prayer, unstoppable worship, and unstoppable breakthrough all around your family, your life. So just for you to go grab it and run with it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Now let's start our Bible study. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify your name. Father, I want to give you all my best. And I'm ready to give you the best, all everything about me. But God, the more I want to give, the more things around me, people around me, surrounding me, is so discouraging. Daddy, this year I pray that you help me to prioritize my priorities. And always put you first. Because if I know today I would have come back from work home immediately things won't have gone this way help me god to make decision that pleases you first please myself and before others god i beg you because it's touching when you try to please your family your children your people around you but nobody cares help me father in this bible study today god my spirit is down help me lord in jesus name Amen. Today, Bible study, we have been working on the book of Ruth. Uh, all through uh, last year, we, we start, continues to start with Genesis, Exodus, and we're in the book of Ruth all through December time. We did our Christmas, we did everything, celebration, and we just came back. And we pray that God will continue to help us to do right unto him and put God first. Be today being the first Tuesday of the year, the first Bible study of the Vanities of Christ. I'm excited, double excited. Whatever that's happening around me, I'm very, very excited. And I'm praying that God will help all of us to learn and change the certain things in life. Um, we're going to root chapter 4. And they read thusly. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat there. When the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came along, Boaz said, Come over here, my friend, sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders of the town and said, Sit here. And they, and they, and they, and they did so. Then he said to the kinsman redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moba is selling the pride, the piece of land that belonged to our brother Eliminate. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do it. But if you will not, tell me so I will I will know. For no one has the right to do it except you, and I am next in line. I will redeem it, he said. Then Boaz said, On the day you buy the land from Naomi and from Ruth, the, the Monabites you inquire the dead man's widow in order to maintain the name of the dead man with this property. At this time, the kinsman redeemer said, Then I cannot redeem it, because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. And so forth and so forth. In this place, this is a pericope in a place where you understand who Boaz is. Boaz is a man of eternity, like we're talking about it uh, before we uh, went off uh, for Christmas holidays. Uh, Boaz is a man of integrity, and if he wasn't, he would have just sneakily buy the land, take Naomi, you know, do everything he want to do. But now he went back and do the right thing. We should on this year, if anything happened, do the right thing. I'm talking to myself too because today, instead of me to make some right decisions to come home from work, to come and do Bible study and get everything ready, because I got here on time even with the snow, God drove me down. But no, I went to grocery to make sure the children are fine, but then I come back home, here comes another place. So we got to understand, first thing first, Prioritize things we should do first in our life. Buzz was one of them. Buzz went to him for seeking and make sure that if you're not going to do it, then I will do it. But 
If you do it, then I will not. Boaz knew he could find his relative at Tan Gate. This was the center of activity. No one could enter or leave the town without traveling through the gate. Merchandise set up their temporal shops near the gate, which also served as a city hall. Here, city officials gathered to transact business. Because there was so much activities, it was a good place to find witnesses. And Boaz was so smart, he had uh, an appropriate place for Boaz to make his transaction. Boaz was so smart. Apart from not just being smart, Boaz have wisdom of God. And Boaz fears God. Once you fear God, automatically the wisdom of God will be on you because you're going to put God first in everything you're doing. God forgive us and forgive me, especially on this day when I thought I was making the right decision. But come to think about it, I did not. Boaz cleverly, uh, cleverly presented his case to the relative. First, he brought in new information not yet mentioned in the story um, eliminated. Naomi's former husband still had some property in the area that was now for sale. And immediately he brought it to him. The man said, oh yeah, is it not the property? It's all about money, people. It's all about money. It's all about greed. It's all about what people want to take from you. People suck you. I was talking to my co-worker today that it's so amazing how people just suck you and suck you and suck you and they don't know how to give back. Greed. Life of selfish and greedy. People just don't know how to reciprocate in saying that this person giving get tired of giving. Sometimes it's good to give back to people that give you because sometimes it's tiring. And this is exactly what is happening here. Boaz immediately said, oh, this woman have a, a former a property. Oh yeah, I will, I will redeem. But when he say you redeem his property, you marry or take the Naomi, the widower, the, and the other widow guess what happened he said uh well the, the property is now sell at the at the nearest relative this man had the first right to buy the land which he agreed to do in leviticus 25 in leviticus 25 25 you see how uh moses uh god have told moses what to do and what not to do but then Boaz said that according to the law <laughs> if the relative bought the property he also had to marry the widow Guess what? Because of the condition of marrying the widow, guess what this man said? Probably because Malana, root for my husband, and Elunek's son had inherited the property. At this stipulation, the relative back down, back off, said, I cannot do it. You know, you got to be careful, people around you, people you deal with. Especially in this year, this is the first, this is the first uh, uh, Tuesday in a year. So we just started a year. So there's every tendency for us to change, for things to, for us to make a decision, make the right decision. People around you, what do they want from you? People that are sucking you like a parasite. People that are sucking you like water. They don't, they don't know how to give back. They, you keep on giving and giving. What do they want from you? It is now you decide to keep to yourself and know what is good for yourself because for example if you die today they will keep on living that's the one thing we gotta understand I'm, and i'm talking to myself actually in this root for my husband and his son heritage. so they, at this stipulation this the relative back up because there was a condition to this property now but if there was no condition, oh, he want to buy it because it's all about money. It's all about property. We've got to be careful, people around us, who all they do is materialistic, selfish, greedy people who don't care about you. They don't care about what you do. Whatever you give to them is the lips. Oh, thank you. Even, even they don't even want to say thank you from the heart of heart. And even if they do, they don't appreciate what you do. That's exactly what is happening here. Immediately, because according to the, the Bible, boys have wisdom. He gave him the money to put in the property, which is the money to first. And the man said, yeah, I got it. Then when he said, according to law, Leviticus 25, 25, go read it. Now, my brother who wanted to do this so good, so excited, got so bitter and back down, back off. Say, I can't do it. He did not want to complicate his inheritance. <laughs> Selfish. He may have, uh, he may have gotten a lot of things. He may have, he may, he may, he may have feared that if he had a son through root, some of his estate would transfer away from his family. To the family of Elimelech, uh, uh, Elimelech, 
Whatever this is reason, whatever the reason of this selfish man here in this uh, pericope, the way was now clear for Baos to marry Ruth. Well, I tell you, it is so good we pray to have our bars in our life. Everybody need a bars, a bars in his life. Be a man or woman, a person that will be there for you, whether you are you have, whether you don't have, whether you are in pain, whether you are happy, that person that will be there for you, my brothers and sister, in this 2022, the first Tuesday of Bible study, if you don't learn anything, I want you to go to your phones and try to look. Is there anybody in those phones? Is there anybody in your life that did not add any value? Delete them. Take them away. Or I call them suckers. They suck you to death. They don't care. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Their name is Oliver Want More. I call them bottomless pit. They cannot be satisfied. You keep on giving and giving. They don't know how to give back. Oh, life is reciprocation. You got to reciprocate. If they cannot, delete them. Take them away from your mind because they will suck you to death and they don't care. That's exactly what is happening here. Before he said about the property, the man was excited. But immediately he said, if you buy the property, you're going to marry the widow of the man that owns the property. Oh no, this man start thinking, okay, if he bunch a child now, he's going to take my property. It's all about them. It's all about selfish. He feared that boys, the, uh, that uh, Ruth might have a child that would take his property to the prop family of Ruth. But now, the man of integrity who did the right thing now have room to marry the one he loves. When you love somebody, I tell people, when you love someone, you, they, you know, when you are in love with somebody, you say, but why did you love me? <laughs> you see, somebody will tell you, I love you because of this, they don't love you. Because if you love someone, you don't know the reason why you love them. That is real love. Mm -hmm. Because if you say, I love you because of money, money will go away. I love you because you are tall, tall will go away. I love you because you are beauty, beauty will go away. I love you because of your family, everything will go away. But if you love someone, you don't know when you, why you love them. That is real love. That is agape love. That's the love that God loves me and you. That's the love that God have transferred into Boaz. Boaz is loving Ruth and Naomi for no reason. When you love someone for no reason, that is real love. You start asking yourself, but what am I with this person? What is it that attracted me to this person? It's the love of God. Boaz now have the right to marry the person they want to marry. Amazing. Let's read, uh, you know, we're in Bible study, you know me. You know, Bible study, the Vanceous of Christ, we're always in the Word of God. We are always in that Bible, digging deep on that sparacopy. So 15, he said, he read thusly in verse 15. He said, The woman said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, amen, somebody, mm -hmm. has given him a bath. Was there are some times in life, my brothers and sisters, all you need is one person. And one person is just like Ruth. One person is just that, like Naomi. That one person is like seven people. It's like seven sons, like he just said here. He said that your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better than seven, who, uh, better than seven sons that he didn't have. In this 2022, I pray and I declare and I decree that the Lord Almighty will give us that person who will love us for who we are. Amen. That person who will die for us because he loves us. Amen. That person who will put his life online and say, I will go. You know, I love the book, the book of Ruth. When I was in prayer, secondary school, we're doing it. There's a place that is the pre the pinpoint point of book of Ruth. When, when the daughter-in-law said, you know, the, the mother-in-law said, okay, my, my sons are dead. You know, you guys can go. You guys are young. You can go and marry. And that girl, that lady, that young lady said, 
Where you die, I will die. Where you go, I will go. And your God, I will worship your God. That is a powerful love. Love with no string attached. So I stand here to declare that the Lord Almighty will give us someone in this year 2022, moving forward in our life till God call us eternity. Someone that will love us for nothing. Someone that will love us for nothing, absolutely. Someone that will love us for who we are, for no reason. Someone that will love us for the love of God. Amen. That is what uh, 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 Boaz was for Ruth and Naomi. Ruth's love for her mother-in-law was known and recognized throughout the town, throughout the world. Even now, look at us, we're reading it today. From the beginning of the book of Ruth to the end, her kindness towards others remain remain unchanged one thing in life i tell people my world is my bond we have to be consistent in life whatever you do be consistency don't change your people whatever you want to do look at what he said when you love the lord when you keep his commandment you will even love people around you from the beginning of the book of root to the end the kindness of root or uh, uh, towards others remain unchanged god brought great blessings out of naomi's tragedy even greater seven greater than seven sons or an abundance of their of hers throughout her tough times bless her greatly even in our own sorrow and calamity god can bring a great blessings so don't even bother to start crying in this year when satan knock at your door when that struggle come to your door when those problems come to your door go to who is the answer of everything cry unto him because he's the owner of sorrow he's the owner of calamity he's the owner of struggle i come to tell you my brothers and sister on this great day of tuesday january 4th 2022 the first tuesday of bible study i came to encourage you the book of root is amazing that we're going to end the book of root today but it's a very good book to continue to start off the, the year 2022 amen somebody a very good book to be to encourage you a very good book to to push you a very good good, uh, good book to to, to, to support what God told me to tell you all that this year is unstoppable praise. I mean, somebody. Unstoppable praise, unstoppable prayer, unstoppable worship, unstoppable breakthrough all around. That means, doesn't mean the problem will not come. Doesn't mean that the, the devil will not knock on your door. Doesn't mean that sickness will not come. Suffering will not come. Struggle will not come. But baby, unstoppable praise will take up those suffering. Suffering, unstoppable praise. We take off those sorrow, unstoppable praise. We take off those calamity because that's exactly what Ruth and Naomi went through. The Bible, according to the Bible, the Bible says, even in our sorrow, in this time of sorrow and calamity, Ruth and Naomi was believing in one God, the God Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. And I want you now, advice to my brothers and sister, whatever that will come to you on this 2022, because it will come. Oh, I will not be a real woman of God called by God if I tell you everything is going to be fine. It is a brand new year. You're not going to say, oh, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Because if you say this year I'm going to get closer to God, guess what? Satan is going to get closer to you. Amen, somebody. I'm telling you the truth. But the more you get closer to God, the more Satan come on you. You are a winner because guess what? Like the song said when I started Jiggy them, Onyem Wem Jiso Jiggy them, hold me strong. The Lord will hold you strong. I told God, I'm going to hold you so strong that no hair will enter between me and you. Long time ago, that's what I told him. So in the midst of my sorrow, in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my suffering, I don't care because I just say, hey, the owner of sorrow, there you go. The owner of temptation, there you go. You created the Satan, there you go. So I don't have to be bothered about having high blood pressure or, or having headaches because I go to sleep in the pillow like Jesus did on the time of storm. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in our own sorrow and calamity, God can bring great blessings. It depends on our faith. It depends on what you believe. Be like Naomi, my brothers and sisters, and turn, don't turn 
your back on God. Oh, when tragedy strikes, instead of asking, how can God allow this to happen to me? Trust him. Trust in God. That is our topic. Amen, somebody. Amen. Trust in God. That is the topic of this Bible study. I know you're going to would have been asked me, what is the title of this Bible study? Yeah, now you know. Trust in God. Amen. I'm going to repeat myself. Be like Naomi and don't turn your back on God on this year 2022 because of tragedy strikes Amen. your life Amen. or anything strikes. Instead of asking God, why me? Why do you allow me to do this? Trust in God. He will be with you Amen. in the hard times of your life in this year and the following years in Jesus' name. Amen. To some, the book of Ruth may be just a nice story about a girl who was fortunate, but in reality, I come to tell you today, it's not a story. The events recorded in Ruth were part of God's preparation for the birth of David and of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's why that book, it looked like it's a small book, but I tell you, that's the big, that's the most, most powerful book in the Bible because it directed everything about the book. It's about Jesus, Jesus' birth, about Jesus coming, the promised Messiah, Amen. just as Ruth was unaware of this large purpose in her life, we will not know the full purpose and importance of our lives until we are able to look back from the perspective of eternity. Amen? Amen. Amen. When we start looking on the, uh, back on the uh, perspective of eternity, we know the reason why God created us into this world. We must make our choices with God's eternal values in mind. Like I was saying when I started prayer, everything we do this year and moving forward in your life, always make decision always make important uh, 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 choices with the, the the values of God's eternity in your mind taking moral shortcuts living for short rage rage pleasure and not good ways to move ahead oh let me just cut off and do this it is not a good way to move ahead make sure you put God first in everything you do Amen. because roots faithful obedience her life legacy was significant even though she was she could not see all the results because she's not here but that is it the life you're living today is your legacy of tomorrow what is going to be your legacy for future when you die what are, what are people going to say about you that's what that matters right now because a lot of us don't, don't want to talk about death no you're going to talk about death death is going to come come on now <laughs> don't be scared of it it's going to come you just have to pray to god to come at the right time and the right time is that you're still in tune with god Amen. that when you go you're going to say welcome my faithful servant and the right time is for you to be older and wisdom and you know i see people you know, keep on dialing the white air. And I'm like, wow. Oh man, I love those white air because it shows how God had brought us a mighty, mighty long way. Yeah. I don't know about you, but uh, but when I was in primary school, I lost some friends. I lost some classmates in the in the elementary school. Then I went to the primary school, which which, which they call a, a, a middle school. I lost some friends too. Then I went to the secondary school, which we call high school here. I lost a lot of friends. Then got into the university. Oh my God. I lost a lot of friends in the accident and stuff. And I'm going to sit down here and God brought me a mighty, mighty long way. I'm still alive. Amen. Come on, baby. Those white hair, I'm going to showcase this when it come out. Because I'm telling them, God, I'll see, keep me alive to see this great day when Amen. some of my men did not even come out of their mother's womb. Their, mother's, but their mother did not even keep them. They aborted them. And some came out still better. Some come out not alive. Oh, my God. What would I say? But thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because I'm still here. So we have to be careful on this year 2022 how to please God in the way we are living from the top of our head to sole of our feet. What we're doing, we got to, uh, uh, you know, the, this song, I like, I like this song. The, this, the song means I'm bragging with God. I'm bragging with the name of the Lord. I'm bragging that God has brought me a mighty long way. So therefore, if I have those 
those white hair on my hair, I'm going to showcase it, showing that yes, I'm getting old because since I was born, now I am old and never see the righteous uh, bread and I never see God change. Therefore, if I'm changing, therefore, I'm from changing, then God Amen. is doing some miracle in my life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So according to the Bible, Ruth's faithful obedience, her life legacy were significant even though she could not see the result. <laughs> you see, you see, one thing I talk about people, I've been here doing this Bible study, doing church, and doing, but immediately God called me to eternity. Guess what? People will go on my YouTube, go on my Facebook. They say, oh, this is it. But when you are alive, they don't appreciate you. I tell people, you never know what you have until you lose it. Amen. We lost one of the pastors in Nigeria, and I tell and so many people start saying something on their Facebook. Oh, uh, may so rest in peace. Don't perfect me peace if I'm alive. You can say hello to me. God punish the devil in the pit of hell. Amen. Hey, it's a year of 2022 where you have to love me when I'm alive. Love me in the land of the living. Love your people in the land of living because there's nothing absolutely you can do. Love them when they are alive. The legacy of what you live today is your legacy of tomorrow. Her life and legacy was significant, but she didn't see the result. But people were talking about it today. We're learning. I've learned a lot. Live in faithfulness to God, knowing that the significance of your life will extend beyond your lifetime. Even when you're dead, they're still talking about you. Like they're talking about Ruth and Naomi. They are done gone. The reward will outweigh any sacrifice you may have made. My brothers and sisters, the book of Ruth. Oh my God, I just want to continue and on. But now we end the book of Ruth and we are going to go for the book of Samuel. The book of Samuel is a book where we have to start with the overview of the book of Samuel. Runners, take your mask. The starter backs his signal and the crowd turns quite attention to the athletes walking towards the line. Get set. In position, like we, were, you know, I'm a runner. I do a lot of extra, extra curriculum in school. Say, get set, pip, you go. The pip is the horn. <laughs> in position now, Moses tense, nervous, anticipating the sound of the gun. It's resound, and the race begins. In any contrast, the start is important. Anything you do in life, my brothers and sisters, starting is very important. Be careful how you start. Because this is a brand new year. So I'm, I'm preaching. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible, man. Yeah. Be careful how you start. It's a brand new year. Yeah. The starting is important, I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters. But the finishing is even more crucial. Often a front runner will lose strength and fade to the middle of the pack. <laughs> and there is a tragedy of the brilliant uh, beginner who sets the pace for a time but does not finish, even finish. That's why in English I love one woman speak one day to me. He said, it's not how far but how well. Mm -hmm. When he said it those days, I didn't know what it meant. But I started growing up and reading, going to school and reading. I said, oh, that's what Mama Benta mean. He said, well, it's not how far, but how well. It's not how you started, but how do you end? Your, your end is your legacy. Often a front runner will lose his strength and fade the pack. And there is a tragedy of a brilliant beginner who set the pace for time, but does not fin even finish. He quits the race, burn out, exhausted, or injured. First Samuel is a book of great beginners and tragedy ends. It begins with Eli. I know my children will be used to this. <laughs> it begins with Eli as a high priest during the time of the judges. Great priest. As a religious leader, Eli certainly must have begun his life with a close relationship to God. In his communication with Hannah and in his training of our son Samuel, he demonstrated a clear understanding of God's purpose and calling. But guess what? Chapter 1 3. But this life, his life ended in agony. As his, sacri his, his sacrilegious sons were judged by God and the sacred act of the covenant fell into the enemy's hands. Chapter 4. 
Eli's death marked the decline of the influence of the priesthood and the rise of the prophet in Israel. Samuel was dedicated to God's service by his mother, Hannah. He became one of the Israelites' greatest prophets. That's why I gave one of my sons, Samuel. And I guess I pray and hope that he understands what his name is all about or go read it over and over to remind himself. And this is one of the year. Every year you got to continue to go back to the Bible and read the word of God. He became one of the Israelite greatest prophets. He was a man of prayer. Samuel was a man of prayer who finished the work of judges, began the school of the prophet, and anointed Israel's first kings. But even Samuel was not immune to finishing poorly. Like Eli family, Samuel sons turn away from God. It's always the children. It's always the children that put us in trouble. You a great man of God, a great woman of God, you a pastor, you a this and your dad. Guess what? You will have one child or son or daughter or two or three who will bring you down and do some immorality that you'll be so ashamed to even talk. The devil is a liar and it's wicked that we're gonna put keep on going. Great men like allies and great men like Samuel, how did they end? Because of their sons. Samuel's sons turned away from God. They took bribes and prevented justice. The people rejected the leadership of the judges and priests and clamored for a king as the other nations are. Saul also, also started quickly. A man was God's, a man striking figure. This handsome and humble man was God's choice as Israel's first king. Guess what? What happened to him? His early region reign was marked by leadership and bravery, but he disobeyed God, became jealous and paranoid, and finally had his kingship taken away from him by God. What a pity. And I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Saul's life continues steadily downward, or prayer, or, 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 obsessed with killing David, he consulted the media, finally committed suicide. Among the event of Saul's life is another great beginner, David. A man who followed God. David ministered to Saul. Kill Goliath uh -huh. and become and, be, and, 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 and became a great warrior. But we will have to wait until the book of 2 Samuel to see how David finished. Ah! Oh, I pray that we finish well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Upon all this race, like this song was for the, this song we used to Bible study so is a right song. Jiggy them. God, hold me strong. Do not let me fall. Like all these people. As you read First Samuel, not the transition from the, the theoretical to Monaco altar in the classic stories of David and Goliath, David and Jonathan, David and Abigail. Watch the rise, the rise of the influence of prophets. But in the midst of the reading of in the midst of all reading, in the midst of reading all the history and the adventure determined to to run your face as God's person from starting to finish. Vital status. Purpose to record the life of Samuel, Israel's last judges. The reign and declare of Saul, the first king, and the choice and preparation of David, Israel's greatest king. Author, possibly Samuel, but also in include writings from the prophet Nathan and Gad. The book begins in the days of Judges and describes Israel's transition from the, uh, from the theoretical, led by God, to a monocle and led by king. King, uh, the key verses, and the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. Now, listen to them. But warn them thoroughly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will do. And the key people in this Samuel was Eli, Hannah, Samuel, Saul, Jonathan, and David. The blueprint, Eli and Samuel, Samuel Bart and childhood, war with the Philistines, Samuel and Saul, Saul becomes king of Israel, God rejects Saul for disobedience, Saul and David, 
Samuel annoyed David. David and Goliath, David and Jonathan become friends. Saul pursue David and Saul defeat. Saul, de Saul defeat and death. We see vivid contrast between young Samuel and Eli's sons defrauding people. But Samuel grew in wisdom and gave the people message from God. And I pray that in this year, 2022, yeah. we are all going to grow in wisdom. Yeah. It's so amazing. I started this year with my children for hours on that year, on that 1st of January. I was talking to them what they're going to do for their life, that we all need wisdom. And here comes the book of Samuel saying, Samuel grow in wisdom and gave the people message from God. As an adult, Samuel became a prophet, priest, and judge over Israel. A person's actions reflect his character. Amen, somebody. A person's actions reflect his character. Whenever you see people's character, you can tell who they are, how mean they are, how wicked they are, how loving they are, how kind for they are. And they, you know, what is that? like they say, tell me who you uh, who you go out with. I tell you who you are. Or another self, best of the same for that flop together. When you get close to God and get that wisdom, your character will reflect your action. Amen. This was true of Samuel and Eli's sons. It is also true of us. Strive like Samuel to keep your heart pure before God. Amen. Everyone, I'm talking to everyone online. Strive like Samuel and keep your heart pure before God. Saul showed great promise. He was strong, tall, and modest, and some, according to the Bible, was most handsome. God's spirit came upon him. And Samuel was his counselor. But Saul deliberately disobeyed God for no reason and become an evil king. We must not base our hope or future on our potential, not at all. Yeah. Everything we do in this life, we shall base our potential, perspective, everything unto God, wisdom. Instead, we must consistently obey God in all areas of our life. God evaluates obedience. God loves obedience, not potential. David quickly killed Goliath, but I waited patiently for God to deal with Saul. I know that's right. That's why the Bible said the battle is mine, says the Lord. Yes. If the David wanted to kill Saul, so many times God put Saul into David's hand. But God, David was like, Saul, uh, king of Saul, I am here. I would have killed you, but I do not want to commit any blood uh, sin because of you i don't want to kill a choosing so uh, a king from god so my brothers and my sisters david quickly killed goliath but waited patiently for god to deal with saul although david was anointed to be israel next king he had to wait years to realize this promise the difficult circumstances in life and the times of waiting often refer teaching Prepare and prepare us for the future responsibilities God has for us. Prayer. God, let me have wisdom to follow you. Amen, somebody. That's the prayer we need to pray right now. Father, give me wisdom to follow you all the days of my life in this 2022 and the other years coming in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to hurry up because my phone is about to die. Father, in the name of Jesus, give me wisdom to follow you. Give my children wisdom to follow you. Give everyone, the vassals of Christ, nation, church, all over the world, non-members, to follow you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the air, Maka Kasaka Laboshi Nida Bakeke, Yela Kalaka Lakalaka. God, let me have wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom to follow you in Jesus' name. Number two, prayer. God, please let me fear and obey you in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me the spirit to fear you and obey you in the mighty name of Jesus. Makule Bose Kalabase Kileba, Ye Keke Keke Kesaka Labashe Telaba, Yela Kalabosi Nila Basindia. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to fear you you and obey you. Help my children to fear you and obey you. Help everyone online to fear you and obey you. Help the vassals of Christ the Church all over the world to fear you and obey you. Father, we can't do it by ourselves. Help us, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the top prayer, God, let my enemy fall and die by fire, by thunder. No, that's right. In the mighty name of Jesus, a good prayer to start yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. God, let my enemy fall and die. Any enemy of the vassals of Christ, any enemy online that said the church of God will not move forward, or my life will not move forward, or my children's life, or my marriage, 
Father, in the name of Jesus, let our enemy die in the mighty name of Jesus. Enemy of the voice of Christ, die and fall and die. Enemies of, of our father's house, enemy from my mother's house. Father, don't care what they are. Let them die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, I started this Bible study so tired and weak because of what is happening. But I thank God for the Spirit of God who said, when I'm weak, I am strong. Hallelujah, somebody. And I finish. I don't want to come. I don't want to stop, but I have to stop because I've been sent to do this and time in time in time in. and we are almost always on time i thank god for everything everyone that joined in thank you so much god bless you all for coming and god bless you all for joining our bible study like i said my name again is reverend dr john william wachuku Alton james the general overseer and shepherd of divine science of christ we are going into our our second year of divine science of christ and we are moving forward powerfully every day unstoppable prayer unstoppable praise unstoppable worship unstoppable breakthrough all round breakthrough so i don't care what we go through it's unstoppable baby we gotta keep on moving we move amen somebody we move, we move unstoppable in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless all of you and uh, thank you for joining. We are so grateful that you made it. We made it one more time. We made it this year. And so shall it be God will protect us and guide us in Jesus' name. Look how many 